Hello everyone and welcome to a week of Linux news for the 18th of September 2016 and thanks for all the positive comments last week about this series and yeah I will intend to keep it up now. Be nice if I can get a few more views but hey look one step at a time. I want to start this week with some stupid news. Paramount attempted to wipe out an Ubuntu torrent from Google's search engine because it infringed their rights on the 2014 movie Transformers Age of Extinction. And I'm not making that up. So they believe an Ubuntu 1204.2 ISO from, what would it be, 2012 or 2013? Anyway, it predates the movie by at least one or two years. It allegedly infringes upon their rights for the movie. Now this is a problem with the DMCA takedowns. They are automated and there are no repercussions for getting it wrong. Okay, in this instance, they hit the torrent website extratorrent.cc. So that is not a direct link to Canonical. Now let's hope it stays that way because we don't want them to hit main Linux sites like Canonical and Ubuntu because one of the repercussions of this is that the more DMCA strikes that Google receives, the more they'll start delisting the website and lowering it down the search results. After more than a decade, the Vim editor is getting a major upgrade. Now I have to say I don't personally use Vim, uh, my choice seems to be Nano or Kate. But I know there is a great debate in Linux of which text editor is the best, and yes, how do you know when someone uses Vim? Because they'll damn well tell you. But here's the list of improvements. Asynchronous input-output support. Support for JSON. Vim can now start a job, communicate with it, and stop it. Vim can now support asynchronous timers. These can fire repeatedly and invoke any function to do any work. Plugin package support. Window IDs. Wrapping lines with indent. Okay, so that's a promising list of improvements. And perhaps they will prove useful for anyone who uses Vim. Linus Torvalds has revealed his favourite programming laptop. It's a Dell XPS 13 Developer Edition. I can't remember exactly which Dell laptops it was, but I remember some drivers being added to the kernel. For when the laptop detected that it was being dropped, it would shut down the hard drive. I wonder if that's something that Linus pushed for. <laughs> who knows? But there's a big write-up here about why Linus enjoys that laptop. I wonder what operating system he's put on it. Getting the hardware to work and play well with GNOME desktop isn't easy. So he uses GNOME, does he? I always thought he used X-Face. Linus doesn't care about touchscreens. <laughs> because my fingers are big and clumsy compared to the text I'm looking at. <laughs> also, I can't handle the smudges. Maybe I just particularly oily fingers. Debian version 9, Stretch, is nearing final release and the developers are holding a bug squashing party in Salzburg on the 23rd to 25th of September. Well, I do hope they get a final release that's very much stable because this is what Debian is known for, being a very stable and reliable system. I have to say though, when I tried out the KDE version a couple of months ago, it didn't work very well. It hadn't got the plasma dependency sorted out very well and I ended up having to backport packages from... SID, which didn't really work very well. So that's where I moved on to KDE Neon, and yeah, I much prefer that distro. But hey, look forward to seeing a very stable version of Debian later in the year. Canonical have released a new version of Snapcraft, Snappy Creator. So Snappy is an alternate method of packaging applications where all dependencies are supplied within the one package. Rather than having to rely upon set version numbers within the Debian package manager, because when you have multiple applications requiring different versions of the same dependency, oh, that's when all hell breaks loose and it really becomes quite unmanageable. So perhaps snaps are the future, but then you have to argue that the packages are going to be bigger because you're going to have the same dependencies repeated over and over again on your system. Look, I'm not going to dismiss it. It's a good idea. So it would be good if snaps were the only type of... Uh, package like this, but of course they're not in Linux. So Snapcraft 2.16 is now available for Ubuntu 16.04, so you can install it via the software center. There's a new home cloud storage. Yeah, sounds very weird that. Home cloud storage. Well, technically it's not in the cloud, is it? Because it's in your home. Although you could have it at someone else's home, in which case you could then say it's in the cloud. So the next cloud box for sale is coming with a 1TB USB 3 Western Digital Drive, a case, micro USB charger, micro SD card with snappy Ubuntu on it, and Next Cloud 10 pre-installed. 
all you need to do is supply a Raspberry Pi or an Odroid C2. Now the Raspberry Pi doesn't come with USB 3, so I'd imagine that would be quite throttled on USB 2. That's why I've never wanted to build a NAS from a Raspberry Pi. On the other hand though, it would be quite energy efficient. Be interested to find out what the price of this is because, because you can get plug-in NAS drives fairly cheaply these days. There's more information in this article about the Nextcloud. So Nextcloud is teaming up with Canonical and Western Digital Labs to bring its private cloud-in-a-box device to the market. So it'll be open source, and it doesn't come with Raspberry Pi 2, because if it did, it would be subject to FCC regulations and would delay the availability of getting the device to market. So you can access your Nextcloud box only within the local network. You can't yet access it over the internet. However, there are ways to access it over the internet. Yes, you open the port up on your router. They have a tool in development to open the ports up on the firewall for you. That'll work on all routers and firewalls. Sorry if I'm just sounding too suspicious here, but uh, I think it varies from device to device. So if you want to use HTTPS, you have to install the certificate yourself. So why should you buy it? Western Digital already sells a consumer-grade device called MyCloud, which reportedly runs on Linux. So the next cloud box could very well be the successor of MyCloud if the device receives positive feedback from users. Western Digital might switch to Ubuntu Core plus Nextcloud. Okay, but I still have to reiterate my earlier point that the Raspberry Pi does not have USB 3 speed USB ports, so it'll run slower than the SATA 3 drive that it probably has in it. A bit of gaming news here, Deus Ex Mankind Divided is officially coming to Steam OS and Linux. Wow, it's good to see a AAA gaming come to Linux. Because it is still a bit of contention here. Oh, Linux can't do gaming. Well, yes it can if you give it half a chance. I would have liked to cover more gaming on my channel, but I find I never really get the view count and then it becomes difficult to justify. I still wonder how interested people are with Linux gaming. It's one of these difficult situations that uh, the more games that are available, the more incentive there is for people to play games on Linux, and the less the argument will be, oh, Linux can't do gaming just because it can't handle someone's favourite game. The games that I have played on Linux have worked absolutely fine, and in some cases games on Wine have worked better than the version I've played in Windows. Some security news here. Infected Android phones could flood America's 911 emergency services with DDoS attacks. So researchers have shown how malware-infected phones could launch automated distributed denial-of-service attacks to cripple the US emergency phone system for days. Well, that's pretty bad and would lead to quite a significant loss of life. And it's based on the requirements that mobile phones have to be able to phone the emergency services, even if they're not logged in, and they don't necessarily have to provide a true identification. The inferior's malware could randomise a caller identification number, and then phone the emergency services. The high number of calls would overwhelm the system. Now when we're talking about malware within Linux, yeah, it's not exactly susceptible to the operating system. It's probably more a case of an app-based malware. Someone's probably been tempted with a free app that would normally cost a lot of money, or the other one's free porn. Those apps tend to be quite lethal and do contain malware. You don't get anything for free, and sure enough, when it's laced with malware, yeah, no, it's not free at all. A few distros that have been released this week. So we've got Linux Mint 18 KDE Edition. You can see it's been quite a long time since I last reviewed a Linux Mint distro. Yeah, I don't tend to be able to praise them enough, and uh, the, uh, let's say, passionate users don't like that particularly much. Elementary OS 0.4 codenamed Loki has been released, and I've already done a review on that this week. It certainly was an improvement from the previous version, but as I pointed out at the end of the video, I think they're trying to reinvent the wheel with this distro. I mean, if you tear it down to a basic level, it almost looks like GNOME with a dock. Linux Deepin version 15.3 has been released. As you can see, this is a Chinese distro. It's been a long time since I last looked at this distro, but from what I remember, it does have English language pack on it. And just a bit of side news here, that uh, Grand Tour finally launches on November the 18th. 
This is Jeremy Clarkson's new show with Richard Hammond and James May. It's been a long time since uh, Top Gear ended and, um, well, it got replaced and I've never watched its replacement, so kind of looking forward to this. Well, I'll be able to watch this on Amazon Prime. Uh, however, I don't have Flash Player on my system and I will not be installing it, so I may have to acquire this some other way. Anyway, that was a look at the news for this week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.